Have you ever hiked the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu? Yeah, that's kind of what today's video is going to be like. Hi, my name is Jim Hart. I'm the founding attorney here at Hawthorne Law, where we help online entrepreneurs to get your legal house in order so that you can build a business that truly matters in the world. Now listen, I've never been to Machu Picchu. It is on my bucket list, but I'm here to get to Machu Picchu, which is an ancient city of ruins in Peru. You have to hike for four days on the Incan Trail through ups and downs and mountains, the Andes Mountains, and it Evidently, it is physically and mentally excruciating and it is a difficult trip. But by the time you reach the ruins, you are going to be a changed person and all that effort that you put in is going to be well worth it at the very end. Filing a trademark application is kind of like that, but instead of four days, it takes between 12 to 18 months. Let's settle in. Now, tell me if this is something that resonates with you. So you've got a great idea for an online business. You built a website. You're creating content. Maybe you started a YouTube channel, which is not a bad idea, I hear. Honestly, things are going pretty well. You're getting some traffic. Maybe you started an email list. You're, you're honestly, you're feeling pretty good about your online business prospects. This might actually work, you tell yourself. But there's something missing, and it's called revenue. We all need it. We all want it. It's what keeps our business going. It's what keeps our daily lives going. It's what keeps a roof over our head and allows us to purchase things like this camera I've got right here. So to keep your business going, you need to find a way to make that good, good green. So you decide to launch a course, or maybe it's a product. It, it doesn't really matter. It's, you decide to launch something that you're going to sell. Now let's assume it is a course. Launching a course is no small undertaking. It takes time, it takes research, it takes changes and iteration. It takes hard work. You gotta create videos. You gotta create documents. You gotta create PDFs. You gotta create text. You gotta teach people. You gotta do all these things. And then, that's not all. Then you gotta actually sell something, which means you gotta go to the general public and you gotta figure out a way to make them actually pay you money. So you're getting into the course, you're building it, you're being creative, you're listening to your audience, you're hearing what they have to say, you're trying to find ways to provide value to them, and now you just have to come up with a name. And you do. You, you, you listened to my last video right here, you found a great name for your course, and you decide, you know, this is it. And you do a name search, you go through that whole process to make sure nobody else is using your name, and so now it comes time to actually register it as a trademark. And although you know you probably should hire a lawyer to do this. At this point, you're still not generating a whole lot of revenue, so you decide, you know what? I can do this myself. How hard could it be? I mean, seriously, how hard can this be? It's just filling out some forms and submitting them online and paying a fee, right? That's it. That's all you got to do. It's not quite like that. All right, now let's just assume you understand the basics about trademarks. You know that trademarking a name is first come, first serve. That means that the first person to file the application for a certain name is the one that's going to get that name, assuming it's available and you can use it in commerce. So if somebody else files the same name as you do, but they get in line and they file their application before you do, then you're going to lose. Let's also assume that you understand that if you don't file your trademark and you don't register your name, then you could lose out on important legal rights. So you're ready to go. You want to file your application as quickly as possible, so you run on over to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, and then dun, 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 you run into the TESS monster. Now, what is the TESS monster, you may be wondering? TESS is the online trademark application behemoth monster that you need to use when you're filling out your trademark application. I will tell you, anyone theoretically can use it. You don't have to be a lawyer to do this, which is good, but it's also a little scary because test, I call it the test monster because it's not exactly user friendly. Let's just say that when Web 2.0 came out, they didn't have that in mind at the US Patent and Trademark Office. Whoever is doing their website has not quite updated things. I imagine that the software that was used to create this this application online is probably 20 or 30 years old, if I had to guess. I mean, the font is small. The instructions contain a ton of legal jargon that are hard to understand. I mean, even for me, like it's, it's, it's hard because there's so much font on the page that you barely understand what you're looking at. And if you don't understand something, then you have to click a link that takes you to the US Patent and Trademark Office trademark manual, which is thousands of pages of rules and definitions and cases 
and different things that if you're not a lawyer or you're not legally trained at a minimum, it's gonna be hard to understand. So what I wanna do here today is explain to you a couple of the major hiccups that I see people make when they are filing their trademark applications that you can understand how best to avoid these if you do decide that this is something you wanna do yourself, which full disclosure, you can. You can do it yourself, it's not impossible. As you're getting into the system, the first thing you need to decide is which trademark application you're going to use. There are two trademark applications. There, they are called Tees, which is T-E-A-S. There's Tees Plus and Tees Standard. Tees Plus, the main benefit to that is it's 50 bucks cheaper. You only pay 225 for your application fee versus the Tees Standard, which is 275 for your application fee. Basically, my recommendation, if you're doing it yourself, is that you go with the Tees Standard. And the reason for that is because if you make a mistake or you need to update your application at any time in the future, if you go with the Tees Plus, you have to submit everything the right way at the beginning. And if you mess something up, you have to amend your application to a Tees Standard and they charge you another fee to do that. Or alternatively, you might just have to start your application over from scratch and pay an entirely new filing fee. So my recommendation is go with the T standard. It's $50 more expensive, but it gives you the flexibility that if you need to change something later on, you can do that. This is also especially important if you decide that you need to have a lawyer help you later on because then the lawyer can more easily get involved with your application. The second major decision you need to make when you're filing your trademark application is who is the owner of the mark. Now the owner of the mark is the entity that is actually using the mark in commerce. Most people think that is them on a personal level, but in reality, it's usually probably their business. And so this is the biggest mistake I see people make. They file their application and they name themselves as the owner. The problem with this is that later on, you can't assign the rights in your mark from you as the owner to the business. If you decide you wanna do that, you have to file an entirely new trademark application with you as the business. Does that make sense? So the business is going to own the trademark. If you're still a sole proprietor, that is okay, but you need to make sure that you clearly state on your application that you're filing the trademark application as the owner of the mark as a sole proprietor. No, 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 I'm after I'm done. I need you to record me, so you can re I can record you after I'm done. I feel like every time I try to start a video, there's like a siren or somebody mowing their lawn or a leaf blower or something going on in the background. You hear that? All right, it's starting to fade away. <sighs> Obstacles obstacles that keep you from getting to your goal. Third major decision, you know, see, I told you, you're going through this application. If you don't know what you're doing, it's gonna be tough. But the third major decision you need to make is you have to decide what class applies to the goods or services that you're selling. Now, there's a whole bunch of different classes and they all apply to different things. You know, whether you are you know, a landscaper and doing landscape services or a lawyer or an accountant or you're selling online courses or, you're running a restaurant or you're selling clothes, whatever it is, there's all sorts of different classes. And so you have to find the class that applies to your goods and services and that's the one that you wanna register under. You have to pay a filing fee for every single class you register with. So this is something that a lot of people mess up is they file under the wrong class or they don't file under enough classes and so that can be a problem. All right, the fourth decision you need to decide is are you selling right now? Are you selling products and services? If you just get started with your online business and you've got a great name for a product or service that you're gonna be using, you may not be selling yet. But if you are selling, you're gonna file what's called a 1A application. If you're not selling, you're gonna file what's called a 1B application. And there's different legal requirements for both. And there's different filing requirements for both. Also, the timing of when you can actually register your mark is gonna be different because with a 1B application, if you're not currently selling, later on down the road, you're gonna to have to show proof that you are selling so that your mark will register. Which leads us to the final steps in the trademark application process. And that is if you're filing, again, a 1A application, which means you are selling in commerce right now, you'll have to provide a specimen. Now, no, this is not some weird medical procedure. This is actually a usually a PDF or a JPEG image that shows how you're using your mark in commerce. And then you also have to provide a description of that. If you're doing a 1B application, you're just gonna pay your filing fees, you're gonna sign your application electronically, and you're gonna move on with your life, for now anyway. So many of you are probably wondering, okay, great, I've done all this, now do I get my trademark? Oh, 
grasshopper. Not so fast. I think we need to sail in for another cup of coffee. Are you feeling enlightened yet? I hope you are. So you've done, you've taken the appropriate first step. You have submitted your application, which means you've locked in your place in line, but you're far from out of the woods. In fact, this is where most people actually make their major mistakes on their trademark application is after they filed the application. Because after you file your application at the US Patent and Trademark Office, a an examination attorney, an examining attorney, is gonna take a look at your application. They're gonna do a search and they are looking for every single reason to deny your application. I know you're like, what? Why, why would they try and deny my application? Because they don't want people to use up improper names in commerce. And if they can find a way to deny your application, they're gonna do it, trust me. They denied Hawthorne Law when I applied the first time. And at that point, they're gonna write you a letter and that letter is called an office action and they're gonna tell you why they're denying your application and they're gonna give you six months to respond. During this time, you're back at your office, you're doing your work, you're creating your content, you're creating your YouTube videos, you're doing everything you need to do to continue building your business and maybe you're even selling products under this proposed trademark which at this time, you can use the little TM signal uh, behind your name. You're probably also wondering why in the world it would be a good idea to file your own trademark application. Well, regardless, don't forget that you gotta monitor and respond to that office action. If you don't, your application is gonna get denied and you gotta start over from square one. Now here's the deal. If you do get an office action, my personal recommendation would be to contact a lawyer and have them respond to you because typically the response to those office actions is gonna require a lot of legal research and potentially a legal brief. It might cost you a couple thousand dollars to have a lawyer do that for you, but that's gonna be money well spent assuming that they can overcome the office action and get your trademark registered for you. And even if you don't get an office action, you're still gonna get notified that your application is gonna go ahead and proceed. But you thought you are done, you're not done. You are not done by long haul. The next step is they gotta publish. Seriously, they thought this is gonna be easy. Nuh-uh. All right, the publication stage is where basically they take your application, they put it in the register, and they give 30 days for anyone who thinks that they might have a conflicting mark to come forward and basically say, no, 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 we've been using that mark first. We object to registering that trademark. So, sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't. It has happened, otherwise they wouldn't have this requirement. But assuming that you do make it through the publication stage, then the trademark office is going to go ahead and they're going to register your trademark and they're going to send you a nice fancy certificate that you can frame and hang on your wall or you know just put with your legal documents if you choose but keep it safe because if you ever have to challenge somebody on their trademark you want to make sure you have that certificate now honestly you can get it online from the patent and trademark office but it's still nice to have that that original one with the, the little gold seal on it. Pretty cool. So anyway, after many months, trials, tribulations, rejections, overcoming objections, all these things, you too can reach your Machu Picchu. If you wanna to listen to more videos about me and trademarks, click right over here. We'll see you in the next video.